Hello, all you lovely people out there. I'm Kate Hill, and I am here as always to give you the best unbiased and honest commentary on property. Today, I have got a bit of a special one for you. It's all about the insane new Queensland land tax rules. It might sound boring, but it's going to affect a lot of people if it happens. Stay tuned to hear all about it. issue that is gathering more and more momentum in the media because it has most of the people in the property investment profession scratching their heads in bewilderment, including me. I myself have spent a lot of time recently going, what the actual heck are they doing? What I'm talking about is the new Queensland land tax, which was quietly, or should that be, sneakily passed in late June by the state government. Now, this tax was first proposed last year, but no one thought it would actually become reality because it was, quite frankly, so ridiculous, potentially not even legal at a constitutional level either. So in a nutshell, the law will see the Queensland government using the total value of someone's Australian real estate holdings across the nation to calculate land tax. Your principal place of residence typically will remain exempt from this according to the Queensland government. So this includes your taxable land in Queensland, as well as your relevant interstate land. In essence, this means that the interstate investors of Queensland property may have to pay land tax for the first time. They may also be required to pay tax on properties located in other jurisdictions and states around the country. Industry bodies such as PIPA and the Real Estate Institute of Queensland have been on the front foot arguing against this insanity at a time where there is a critical undersupply of rental properties, not only in Queensland, but in other states and territories too. As I've been reporting for months, weekly rents have been rising strongly over the past year, given that there is a record low supply of properties available for tenants. In fact, the national vacancy rate, as we all know, hit just 0.9% recently, which is the lowest level in nearly two decades, according to SQM research. While the land tax in Queensland is far from ideal for some investors, the market metrics for property investors remain overwhelmingly positive at present, I do urge you. We are seeing an increase in properties available for sale slowly, which means more choice for those savvy investors keen to make the most of those current market conditions. On top of slightly more stock to choose from, the number of active buyers has fallen compared to this time last year. There is way less of a frenzy in some markets. In fact, according to the latest ABS lending indicators, the value of new borrower accepted loans uh, commitments fell more than 11% for owner occupiers over the year to July, while the value of loans to investors dropped nearly 16% over the same period. That, of course, lumps the whole country in as one. Real Estate Institute of Queensland CEO Antonio Mercarella has branded the tax change a slap in the face to the one sector which is propping up the state's economy. She has said that the government did not consult with the relevant property stakeholder groups before making its announcement. They literally consulted no one to discuss and think through the implications and fallout of this new tax. Ms. Mercarella pointed out that no other state or territory takes this approach on land tax, and she is concerned it will deter people from investing in Queensland. I agree with her. She should be concerned. The whole of Queensland should be concerned. It highlights a complete misunderstanding of basic economics, supply and demand. It will deter some people from buying in Queensland, and it will compel some investors who own in Queensland to sell their properties in Queensland. The implications for investors and renters are severe. If this takes hold, this tax, it will mean that the rental shortage in Queensland, which is already dire, will get even worse. Rents will rise even further because of the supply shortage. Brisbane's vacancy rate is already 0.6%. In regional Queensland markets, we have vacancy rates below 0.5%. International borders are opened. Interstate migrants are moving to Queensland in large numbers. The land tax rules could create a situation, they will create a situation where there are zero vacancy locations across Queensland. There will be no properties available for rent. They tried this in Ireland and look what happened there. It's mayhem. 
Currently, more than one third of Queensland households rent. It's the same across the country. And over 90% of rental homes are provided by private investors. State government social housing, on the other hand, accounts for just 3% of the state's rental supply. People who need to rent will have nowhere to live and the businesses trying to fill vacant job positions will not be able to because willing workers will not be able to find anywhere to live in the area. This is already the case in many regional markets in Queensland. The Property Council Queensland Executive Director has labelled the new measures a tax grab. Given that the state is in the midst of a housing supply and affordability challenge, that's a nice way of putting it, and is unable to fill critical skilled worker positions in, in the labour market, Queensland actually needs all the help and investment it can get. I say hold your nerve. There is currently a little growing sentiment among some investors who are indicating that they may intend to sell their Queensland property or properties because of the new land tax. However, I do think it's quite a drastic protest move, is a little bit short-sighted for most because it is still not clear how the policy will actually work in practice, given it seems that the government expects investors to self-report their interstate holdings. Good luck with that, I say. And likewise, there is still a chance that the tax will be delayed or hopefully repealed if the industry campaign is successful because of its potential to further decimate the rental market across the Sunshine State. But if some investors do decide to sell up in protest, it will provide opportunities for others who are not fearful of the policy, who recognise the potential long-term benefits of owning a slice or two of the Sunshine State's real estate. And don't forget, generally speaking, land tax is an expense incurred by owning income-producing assets. It's probably tax deductible. Check with your accountant about that circumstances before you do anything drastic and whether it is for you a tax deductible tax. I will keep you posted on all things real estate from around the country and maybe further afield. Ireland got a little mention there. As our year progresses, give me a little like and a subscribe if you are enjoying the free content and I will see you soon. Bye.